Hey everyone, Iret here with another process video for HipKit Club. I am using the August 2017 kits. Uh, they are super gorgeous. Uh, this is the third project that I created with the kits and you can find the videos for the previous two as well as the full unboxing of the kit um, on my channel. So this video is part of a new um, series, I guess, not really series, but it's part of the new schedule uh, for HipKit Club in the next uh, six months. So Mondays are going to be mixed media Mondays and um, there will be every week a post on the blog and also on Facebook, I think, but on the blog for sure, there will be three mixed media projects by three members of the design team. So I think every month I participate uh, one time in mixed media Monday. So it's kind of, um, you get a nice uh, variation of the designers. So, you know, tons of inspiration. And if you're a fan of mixed media and if you get the color kits, then I think this is a really great uh, idea for, um, you know, the blog to have those uh, projects. So I started with what I actually had on my cardstock. This is a beautiful yellow cardstock from the cardstock kit. And I already had a little bit um, of paint on it. And you can see how I made that in the first video uh, of me using this kit. It was just I smeared some um, paint on another background and then I just stuck this one on top of it and, um, you know, to pick up the leftovers because I didn't want to get uh, anything wasted. So that was um, like a week before I made this uh, background probably. Uh, so obviously it was dry and then I decided to add some pink paint so I mixed the spray that came in the color kit with some white acrylic paint and it gave me this really beautiful uh, light pink so depending on how much um, you know pink mist you add to the paint um, that's the more you add the brighter the color will be and uh, the more white there is, then obviously the more uh, pastel your shade will be. So then I wanted to add some more of this minty paint. And another uh, item that came in the color kit is the Shimmers paint in Jilted Jade, which is kind of a um, like a bluish green. But, and it's a beautiful color. But I especially love it when I mix it with white acrylic paint because as you can see, it creates the most gorgeous aqua minty color. Um, just gorgeous, gorgeous. So I dried my pink layer and then I went over it with uh, some of the minty paint. And now I wanted to um, activate the daffodil creamies that also came in the kit, but I was too lazy to wait for it. So I just grabbed uh, one of my uh, sprays. This is called No Yokin, and it came in a previous kit, I think last year or something like that. But um, I just wanted some more yellow and I wasn't patient enough to wait for the creamies to activate because creamies come, uh, it's like a hard uh, pan of paint and you have to add water, let it sit a bit and um, before it works. So added some yellow splatters. Then I added some splatters this time directly from the pink uh, spray, which is colorings in pop art pink, a gorgeous, gorgeous pink, uh, one of my favorites. And, and then I also added some um, white acrylic ink from my stash. Uh, you can use any white paint or white mist. I just really like the white splatters. So I also have these leftovers that I have from creating my second project with the kits, which you can also find on my channel. And I thought it would be fun to uh, use them. So I'm trying to use my um, We Are Memory Keepers dial trimmer. And yeah, I have to say this um, trimmer is a little bit finicky and I don't think it's the most uh, user-friendly so 
Uh, you kind of need to get the hang of certain things, but then there are other things. For example, if you want to cut something less than an inch, you can't really measure it on the short side um, because that blue thing in the middle covers the marking of, um, you know, the inches. So you have to, it wasn't a problem because I just, you know, calculated if I want it to be uh, 11 and a half inches or 11 and three quarter of an inch um, and measured it on the left side. But I'm used to, from my uh, Fiskars um, trimmer, I'm used to just being able to see how much, you know, is a half inch and a quarter inch, if which I trim a lot um, to get my layouts to, you know, if I want my backgrounds to be a little bit smaller so I can mat them on a 12 by 12 uh, background. So, um, yeah, it's not perfect. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm trying to use it so I can get a good idea of it and form uh, a final opinion. But, um, yeah, definitely if I was just wanting a simple trimmer, um, I definitely wouldn't choose this one so far from what I'm um, experiencing <laughs> using it. So I was auditioning some uh, 12 by 12 uh, backgrounds to mount my yellow cardstock on. And I decided to go with this uh, gorgeous um, paper, but I want to gut it because it's one of my favorites from the kit. So I'm just trying to um, gut it uh, using the trimmer and yeah, it's it's not a big deal, but you have to kind of... <laughs> I didn't want to take it too far. Um, you know, I didn't want to cut all the way to the edge because then I would uh, mess up my frame. But um, yeah, it worked okay. It's just... That's uh, something that I also have with my regular trimmer, trying to figure out exactly where the blade is because, you know, it's hidden under that little um, blade cap, whatever you want to call it. So, mounting my yellow cardstock and it buckled a little bit. That's the nature of um, using, when you use mixed media on cardstock, it will uh, buckle. Um, but I find that uh, usually it's not a big deal. And, you know, when you add all the other stuff on top of it, it doesn't really uh, show. So I wanted to use the same uh, paper below to mat my photo. Uh, I really love that pop of black and white stripe. Really love that. And now I'm just trying to figure out where to place these um, leftovers from punching uh, pattern papers that I used on my uh, second layout, which had the theme of a quilted using pattern paper to get a quilted um, for a quilted design. So you can check that uh, out on my channel if you're interested. But I thought it would be really fun to use these leftovers and they really fit uh, all my light colors that I had there. So I added some stitching through those leftovers and around the edges. And now I'm going to mount my photo on some foam. And all there is to do now is to embellish. And so I'm just trying to put my papers away. I have tons of papers uh, from this kit. So I really, um, I hope I can use them up because it's a really, really gorgeous kit. I kind of wish I could create a kill a kit class every month, but um, there are so many things that I want to do and there are other classes that I want to make. So um, yeah, I don't think I will be able to. And that brings me to um, my Kill a Kit class, um, which has been really well received and I'm super happy about that. I didn't know, um, I think it's kind of the first uh, pure, if there is such a thing, pure scrapbooking class that I created that is not focused on something like, um, you know, watercolors or paint or something like that. So um, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of mixed media in the class, but it's mostly just, um, you know, traditional scrapbooking with paper embellishments, photos, and all that. And um, yeah, you can find all the details uh, for on that class in the link to my um, school, my online school. 
and it's just a really fun class. So in that class, um, I show how to use up the June 2017 kits, but obviously you can use whatever supplies you have. It just gives you lots of ideas on um, getting the most out of your kits. And yeah, I wish I could do this with every kit because I really enjoy uh, using up the kits. It's just, you know, it's a good feeling to get the most out of your supplies. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's that realistic. <laughs> and uh, I assume that, you know, people are interested also maybe in other uh, classes. So it's nice to have a variety and it's also nice for me to create uh, a variety of things. And that also brings me to another thing. If you haven't already seen, I think it should, I think the first installment of this new series should already be on my channel. So I'm doing a distress oxide for scrap curse kind of thing, a uh, series. And the thing is that I got some distress oxides and um, you know, with uh, any new medium that you add to your stash, um, there's a learning process and you have to kind of get to know it before you feel comfortable using it. And that is always that gap that um, stands between me and um, using certain supplies in my stash. It's usually the ones that I don't know that well. Um, that I use less because the ones I'm familiar with, I, you know, I just grab them because I know what they'll do and I know what I can get. So, yeah, so to overcome this, um, you know, block, I decided to create a series um, using the Distress Oxide in hope that this will get me um, to use them and obviously, you know, inspire you to I use yours and I think a lot I'm guessing that a lot of my ideas will be uh, things you can do with you know any types of inks maybe it won't have that distinct um, distress oxide look but you know the general design of uh, what I'm gonna do um, you can probably I will bet that uh, you can make those with any inks that you have in your stash. So check that out. The first video should be live already and I'm starting super simple. So hopefully this won't be intimidating and you will feel comfortable to join me and, um, you know, try what I'm trying. So uh, you see me just fussing around, moving some stuff, uh, trying all kinds of things. The photo here is of Ella, my eldest, and myself, and we're in a horse carriage. Um, so we went to Vienna for a day with um, her grandmother and uh, her great aunt and um, the daughter of the great aunt, second aunt, no, <laughs> she's not a cousin, I don't know. Anyway, uh, with some family members. So we went to Vienna, we started at the zoo, and then we went to the town center. And one of the things that Ella wanted for her birthday was um, to ride one of those, you know, um, carriages pulled by horses that they have in Vienna. I'm guessing also in other cities, but in Vienna, it's pretty uh, common. And I've never done that. I've been to Vienna, you know, lots of times. Um, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous city, and I've done the tourist thing many, many times. Uh, first, you know, myself, and then with friends that came to visit. And um, But this is something that I would consider super touristy, and I've never done it uh, because it's also not that cheap. And obviously, you know, you can get around town in many other cheaper, simpler ways. But Ella was really excited about it, so I thought it would be a great birthday party, a birthday present from her grandmother. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan of just getting, like, having an experience in, um, you know, as opposed to another stuff, some another toy or something that she already has uh, a gazillion of. So, yeah, we took uh, a ride. I'm sorry about the lighting. This was just the finishing touches and I was too lazy to switch on my uh, good work light. So this is just my bad evening light. So I do apologize, but this is short. Um, just showing you that I stapled those cute little 
uh, hearts. So yeah, so that's the photo. That's us. My um, cousin or my husband's cousin took uh, this photo of us. And I really love it because uh, I don't have a lot of photos with my kids. I have some, but you know, most of the time I'm the one behind the camera. So I'm really happy to have this. And you know, it's just a quiet moment riding in the beautiful, beautiful uh, old town of Vienna. I really wanted to add that bow and I end up not adding it. But I think maybe I will go back and add it next to the tushi of that zebra. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's my layout. I hope you enjoyed this. Check out the other um, projects from the other uh, ladies in the design team in Mixed Media Monday. And I wish you a lovely day. Thanks for watching. Bye.